नमस्कार दोस्तों मैं हूं अमित भाटिया आपका होस्ट भारत स्पीक्स विद टीम न्यूज और में आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आज हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं मेरे को होस्ट पूनम जी इंडियन डीवा जी और मोनी दीपा दीदी मोनी दीपा दी जी आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है आज का जो हमारा विषय है दैट इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक टू सी वॉट काइंड ऑफ हिस्ट्री डिड डेली हैड क्योंकि जो हमें पढ़ाया गया है एंड बींग ब्रॉट अप हेयर बॉर्न एंड ब्रॉट अप हेयर दिल्ली का जहां भी जाओ आपको एक बताया जाता है कि इट्स इस्लामिक आर्किटेक्चर बींग कैपिटल ऑफ इंडिया एंड बींग काइंड ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ इंडिया इट्स रियली हार्ड टू बिलीव के आप साउथ में जाते हैं बहुत मंदिर हैं बहुत एक आर्किटेक्चर दिखता है हिंदू आर्किटेक्चर सनातन आर्किटेक्चर डेटिंग बैक टू थाउजेंड्स ऑफ ईयर्स सेम इज द केस इन एनी अदर पार्ट राजस्थान में दिखता है बट वट हैपन्स वेन इट कम्स टू डेली एंड एंड इट्स विसिनिटी तो देर इज लॉट ऑफ हेरिटेज इन डेली देर इज पुराना किला आपका मेहरौली कम्प्लेक्स है शाहजहानाबाद है लाल किला है और भी आई थिंक मोनी दीपा जी हमें आप आगे बताएंगे लेकिन हम स्टार्ट करेंगे पुराना किला से इट्स आई मीन आई वॉज सटनली इंट्रीग्ड विद क्योंकि हम सुनते आ रहे हैं कि it is where indraprastha was and it is connected to uh, possibly lot of uh, our uh, texts as well jo hamari recorded history hai uska bhi bhag raha hai lekin iske bare mein baat nahi hoti uh, kahin na kahin asi dwara bhi iski baat nahi ki jati so moni dipad ji aapka bahut bahut swagat hai aaj ki interaction mein uh, hum aap se janna chahenge agar aap apne perspective se purana kila pe uh, kuch studies hui hain If you could enlighten us about those, I think it will be good icebreaker. Yeah, Delhi history is uh, not what we read in our books. It doesn't start from the Islamic period. Certainly, doesn't start from the Islamic period. And then the some there are some books which refer to as the Lal Court, the Tomar history. It also doesn't have to start from there. It goes a long way back into the prehistoric, almost the prehistoric period. and uh, but nobody you will not find it discussed anywhere bibi lal who believed in this he had he is an archaeologist he was an archaeologist very famous one you all must be knowing his name so he had conducted uh, he had uh, after reading the mahabharata and seeing the men jatakas also mentioned it the name in the prastha is there so he by uh, and this uh, some of the inscriptions are there like the narayana inscription and there are more few inscriptions from which he could uh, more or less locate the place where it is and then he decided that this place is somewhere near the purana kila and so they started excavating the mounds there and uh, from the mounds they found uh, various uh, levels in the excavation when they excavated they they when they excavated they went down and they found out various periods of uh, artifacts from which they could uh, label that this is a time period and all and uh, so it went by delhi goes back to actually the period one they found painted grave painted grave refers to the 10th century to 8th century bc so it is very old it's not uh, something which started in with the rajputs 6th 7th century also so it goes back to 10th century to 8th century bc we are talking of the before common era that was the first layer they found the second layer then they found was uh, it was some 600 to 200 bc which is again new 600 bc means it is back to the buddha period when buddha was born and buddha was there 600 bc so they found layers from that time also from there they come down to sunga then the kushana period we are first entering the common era now then comes the gupta post gupta then comes the rajput period from where the most of this uh, latest excavations they have let's say uh, deleted the earlier history part what they do is start from the rajput period which is according to the bibi lal it's around say 10th century it starts 10th century and then the muslims come in so they will say they say that just a very short period of the rajput rule and then the islamics take over but that is not the true history true history starts back from 10th century to 8th century bc so this period is what which is not looked into but they have found out if you go to the purana kila they have found they have a museum now there and if you go to that museum this artifacts are all there you find terracotta figures and pictures are there so you these are all there but i don't know why si or the government doesn't 
really promote these things because uh, the textbooks are also not changed. These things should have been added to the textbook, school textbooks, where they only taught that the Rajput's rule for some few 100, 200 years and then the Muslims took over. That is not the true history in the, uh, this Indraprastha area. They have found uh, settlements. They have found evidences of settlements where there are there are hearths, interconnected hearths. Hearths are this uh, cooking fires, basically. And three, four, they are in series. That means there's to be community cooking. So there was a settlement, proper settlement was there. And there's to be like, uh, even in the, if you go to the rural areas of India now, they still have this community cooking where they, the chulhas, they make those uh, rotis and all together women sit together and make it and it's done for the entire village all the women from various homes come sit down make those rotis then they take it back home that is so called community... sajha, sajha chula yes yes sajha chula right and uh, that is still uh, very much prevalent in the rural areas of haryana and the punjab and uh, this sort of community cooking uh, is has been found there which means this uh, culture is very old this is not a new culture that is being carried on in these various uh, states over here, the north and western states. This is a very old culture. And this has but nothing to do with the... Yes. I read that uh, it is uh, from Mahabharata time, uh, this kila is there. It was gifted to to Panda. This, uh, this uh, Panda was, yes, they were given this Khanda Prastha, which is very near to Indra Prastha. It was a very wooded area. They cleared it according to what is there in the Mahabharata part. They cleared it and the settlement started from then. So it uh, Mahabharata has a lot of mention. Mahabharata has a mention. This Bibilal book, he's given a lot, everything about the, the various verses that Mahabharata may, they mention these places. Then in the Jataka stories, Buddha period, as I was saying that they are, uh, they have the third phase is Jataka phase, the Buddha period, 600 BC. Jatakas mention it. They mention it in the Patta. The Indra has mentioned the Jataka stories as in the Patta, which is nothing but in the Prastha. So, this place is very real. In uh, Mahabharata, if you see the Khandava Prastha, the, which the Pandavas were given after they, uh, they all the other properties were taken away, they're given Khandava Prastha. This is uh, very near to Indra Prastha. So, this entire area, they started the settlement. It's uh, very well depicted in Mahabharatas and Jataka. So, uh, but uh, archaeological evidences is always, you know, literary evidence is uh, not. Uh, uh, full, they will not accept uh, only literary evidence as uh, historical evidence. So you need to also give archaeological evidences. That was a major reason why Vivilal took up the excavations during the 50s and 60s. He first started it. It's again restart. Uh, there are many excavations gone on now. Recently, they have again restarted uh, excavating the Purana Kila part. And uh, uh, he excavated it and he found those layers, which goes back is detailed 10th, 10th century BC is uh, it's very old. So, uh, right after the, uh, let's say the Harappan, uh, almost till the Harappan era, it goes yeah. back to that place. So, it is uh, continuing. There is no ban. One, uh, the Marxist historians love to say that after Harappa, there was a dark period in Indian history. It's absolutely rubbish. Because there's uh, there are ample evidences of continuity and culture is still continuing. The culture you fear, this uh, women wearing Sindhu is a Harappan culture. Uh, Harappan yes. women, they have found artifacts with the uh, party in the hair partition, they're wearing Sindhu. So it is continuing. Where is the dark period? Everything is continuing. Those terracotta dolls are still made in Bengal uh, rural areas. Those typical uh, we see in Harappan terracotta dolls. So it's a very continuing culture. Delhi, uh, once this Saraswati dries up, they move towards the Ganga Jamuna Dawaban. This is the area, Delhi. Then uh, parts of UP, this is the area where these people shifted after Saraswati River dried up. So it's not surprising that uh, Mahabharata era has been, uh, the Indrapastha name is uh, there in Mahabharata. Mahabharata has very beautifully mentioned that uh, there has been floods in this Hastinapura. There was flood there. The city got, uh, uh, you know, the problem is in all this ethics and in uh, the Puranas and uh, these, uh, they have given very symbolic uh, things. Problem is most people don't understand. History, I'm not talking about the Marxists. They have misinterpreted and they have made up stories. But these stories are difficult to understand even for those who believe in uh, this epics. That is, 
because they are all symbolic. I'll give you an example. Uh, they have written the Satlej River. They have written Satlej River has thousands of channels. The word named Sadadru, it means there are hundreds of channels. So the writer, the person, the people who have written it were aware that Satadru has hundred channels, but they did not write it as Satad hundred channels. They have given a story where the Rishi goes to commit suicide, and the river did not want the the pap of a Brahman committing suicide. So. It broke up into 100 channels. This is how they described it. So the basic core is true. There are, Satadru is 100 channels, but uh, the story is given that the Rishi wants to commit suicide. So you have to basically read the story and then understand what's the underlying meaning. Same goes for uh, here also. They have given various stories. Arjuna is talking, he is talking, they are talking, but you have to basically sit down and read those stories. And then you have to understand that the core, what is the basic, they are giving some geographical location. They are giving some real happening, some real kings uh, instead. This is how you have to study the epics. It is a bit difficult. So basically you need experts to explain all these things. Coming back to this, this uh, area has been very well defined where it is. It's there in Mahabharata. That is how Vibhilal came to it. And then they have found stone inscriptions uh, from this part. So the stone inscriptions talk about uh, these stone inscriptions. The earliest one is from around uh, the Narayana, that's known as the Narayana stone inscription. It is the 1327 CE. This is the earliest inscription they have found. But the 1327 CE inscription, if you read it, you will find it's already well established. So it goes earlier, goes much at the settlement is earlier then they started excavating excavations they have found beautiful ring wells ring wells are where the kitchen waste go through you have a house the kitchen waste the whatever the water comes out it goes through these wells if you just uh, google you will find beautiful pictures there are rings absolutely long uh, channel is going down underground from the house level it's going down and they are all ribbed very beautiful sir, ring wells they have found ring well is a it's not a very basic uh, drainage system. It's a very uh, developed, where you find it only in developed places, this ring systems, where they separate the uh, toilet water and the kitchen water, they go separately. So it's developed. This is already, these are all found in the the second phase, which is the, uh, this, uh, this is the second phase is from 600 BCE to 200 BC, the Buddha era, 600 BC is starting. So they have found those uh, common uh, kitchen uh, the sto gas, uh, the stoves burning. They have found ring wells. Then there are proper settlement uh, houses, remains of houses are there. So there are, uh, the, they have found kin fired bricks which have been used. Bricks is something which India has been using from the Harappan period. So again, you see the continuity. It is continuing. Culture is continuing. Nothing is lost. Everything is there. So and then they have found very beautiful figurines. They have found ring stones. Ring stone is a sign of Yoni Puja, which is again fertility, mother goddess. So that means mother goddess worship was going on in Delhi at this time. From uh, These are all, all BC era, nothing to do with the common era. So we are talking about proto-historic period. So they were worshipping the mother goddess at that time. They have found many seals. They have found many ceilings. This is all from the 6th uh, BC, the Buddha period. So these are all there. They were already worshipping. They are having community kitchens. They were having separate kitchen drainage pipes. So uh, baby lal excavations have proved all these things. So this is the second layer. Then the third layer is the Sunga period from 200 BC to beginning of common era. Songa period also they have found many artifacts. They have found beautiful terracotta figurines of Mithuna couples. Then uh, they have found uh, pottery, lots of pottery they have found from the Songa period. Then moving on to the Kushana period, again they have found uh, beautiful figures, sculptures they have found and they have found uh, again settlements. These are all in layers, they are coming out. Once they're going up, the layers are all coming out. Then comes the Kushana period, Gupta period. Everything is there in Delhi. But uh, you will not find anything discussed anywhere. I have been reading up books for uh, to see what I find. Nowhere it is mentioned all this. They all start from the Tomara period. But Indraprastha is older than Lalkot. Lalkot is Rajput period, which is coming around 10th century. So I think uh, books need to be written now on these because books are really not available about uh, the history. This part of uh, connecting Mahabharata with Delhi only. Bibi Lal has books. Nobody else has books. 
Correct. These has to be written in a proper way. You know, take out Mahabharata verses. He has given the archaeological. What are the findings? He has discussed the archaeological part yeah. of it. But yeah. Even even I think a uh, couple of years ago there was RTI, or uh, usme uh, it's Saryu or uh, Trust. जिसने एक आरटीआई डाली थी आर्कियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया के लिए कि आई मीन टू प्रोवाइड द लिस्ट एंड डिटेल्स ऑफ हिंदू रिलीजियस साइट्स दैट आर अंडर प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ एएसआई एंड इट क्लियरली सेड दे आर नन सो इट इट आल्सो डिनाइड दैट देयर वर देयर वर एनी व्हिच वर ब्रोकन एक्चुअली व्हिच वर डिमोलिश्ड सो दैट इज द सैड पार्ट आई मीन वन थिंग इज के आप एक्सेप्ट करो द अदर थिंग इज आई मीन एटलीस्ट एक्नोलेज दैट देर वर अर्लियर अब लाल किला के केस में देखिए आई थिंक यू कैन एक्सप्लेन मोर अबाउट इट बट सिक्सटीन थर्टी नाइन में वो क्लेम होता है कि लाल किला बना था शाहजहां बट आई थिंक शाहजहां रेन स्टार्ट इन सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी एट टेन बिफोर दैट एंड देर इज अ पेंटिंग ऑफ दैट आई बिलीव राइट सो I mean that that clearly shows that it wasn't, and there are lots of. I have seen it. I have put the pictures there. I mean, you will see that there are uh, things like uh, uh, Hindu symbols, banana leaves, made up. There are the diwane, am diwane, khas pe. On it, lotus is. On it, color is. All those designs are there. Om, made up. And yet, there is a tarazu wala bhi hai, which was a symbol of. Uh, I think, what you were telling me, ma'am, uh, uh, Anangpal. अनंत like i was saying about delhi only bibi lala has published writing where are the writer writings by other people rc mujumdar i can understand he was fighting the leftists he has written books on other whatever uh, subjects he is expert on he's taken up the other part of history somebody had to write on delhi nobody has written it bibi lala started on from the 1960s uh, 50 60s onwards so basically we have to do that and if you ask you know i have asked iasi people they just deny it they said no and uh, you can't argue with these people they are after all the, the archaeological people and they are very much left oriented very much very disappointed to say this very very much left oriented in delhi they are lighting up this uh, islamic monuments do you find they are doing anything about the hindu monuments trying any work for the hindu monuments in delhi no no where are they doing it everything is lighting up go to uh, sabda jam tongs go to red fort go to kutub minar it's all bright mm-hmm. and shining where is so where are the hindu monuments do you discuss any with us anybody discuss them no Humayun. sultan gari have you heard the name no. i think you must have heard it from no. me for the first time sultan yes. gari is the first islamic uh, mosque built by utmish for his son it was built by broken temples if you go there you will you want to cry if you see those uh, pillars there are so distinctly hindu temples nobody has heard the name if you is discuss it, you know i'll tell you one thing is it not the meroli complex jo uh, this is uh, sultangadi is no it's not in the meroli complex you type for sultangadi i went there i don't know the okay. exact location i've been there once or twice and uh, i just uh, told my driver take me to sultangadi and he knew the location so he took me there and uh, this uh, place uh, the it's like a build like a small fort if you see the pillars uh, you know this is hindu temple pillars there is no doubt about it i was uh, you know uh, the delhi people the delhi historians so i will not take the names they is delhi historians one of them is to arrange for works and before the i'm talking about 2014 15 regular delhi walks he used to take us and uh, one of those uh, people who had uh, gone over there with him i was not in this walk this lady came in back and told me not this this not a just her two or three people also were there they also told me they there is a yoni over there you know inside they uh, they have covered a shivlinga over there it's covered there's a darga now niche jaake and there's a darga over there at the uh, below that thing they have covered everything you will not be able to see anything huh? so 
they had she had noticed a yoni those uh, linga shilinga ke niche jo hai gauri patta what we call as gauri patta she had noticed that it's broken the shinga lip shivalinga is not there anymore but the base gauri patta is there and she had asked what is this you know what was the answer by this delhi walk uh, person who was leading the walk he has a, also a book written and i'm not giving the name but these people uh, how they function they told immediately the answer was that is the base of a pillar a uh, gauri patta was turned into a base of a pillar this is how her history and uh, has been what to say distorted has been destroyed totally how can you just uh, turn a uh, yoni patta into a pillar base is something if i was there i would have uh, spoken to him about this but this is how history has been uh, created Maybe by this people he is having clear instructions not to it of will course, be a part of the controversy and now now indian and the hindu uh, sanatani people are away now they only thing we come to know then the it becomes a big issue and we start talking about it which which uh, put so many people into the uh, you know the, the the question comes to them uh, why why when when why can't we reclaim the structures why can't we reclaim our temple absolutely they so should nobody be wants to enter in this controversy that's why they just want to hide the things under under the carpet they want to keep you know everything all these are hidden you the shivalinga is hidden with a green cloth nobody will if you go and ask they'll say if you go and ask the other entire muslim village will come and fight with you right ho jayega they'll start a riot over there so people uh, avoid all these things but now people have started asking questions because they're reading books they are coming to know the discussing they're going they're seeing it you see the pillars those are hindu pillars temple pillars there is no way those are muslim temple pillar muslim the temple hai nahi muslim pillars they're not they have destroyed temples and you know this uh, hindu temples if you visit this i don't know if you have visited the south indian temples they have this the temple is in the center and the wall the prakara around the prakara they have this pillared halls running around it entire temple the entire wall surrounding the temple they have pillared uh, beautiful pillared uh, spaces which goes around it so you can walk around the whole thing and sometimes they have those rooms where the monk the priest is to stay yeah. or the rishis or the visitors is to come and see these were broken the temple is destroyed they are broken breaking this part they're taking the pillars to build the mosque so the pillars are all hindu pillars that have been used this is there in sultan gari if you notice the ppt that i've sent and the same maybe sultan gari maybe cost saving maybe it is considering cost saving and you know the worst part is they will say this is hindu islamic architecture this is a mix of in <laughs> indo islamic i get so angry you can't understand are what is islamic it, architecture they don't call it hindu islamic they call it indo islamic they make it here. very clear that yeah. india and islam is separate ha huh? this is very and, small and move by them or or moghlai architecture Mughal, Mughal, what Mughal. is moghal architecture islamic architecture is a myth islam i'm not going to the religion part that is also a cut paste of the older pagan religion and it was formed for political reason it is a political body i will not go into it islam i don't believe is a religious body it's a political body and the, their architecture is a total myth what is there in islamic architecture the arch is there india had arch from uh, long ancient times arch was there this uh, yeah, true arch is not in india it's complete crap it's there in india and then uh, dome these are dome is been taken from the sassanid their ancient uh, pagan uh, western religion it was copied from there the greece had dome so what is there in islam there's nothing islam so yeah somewhere i read i mean about the domes uh, i mean even in india we had these domes in uh, rajasthan domes. and and and, and they domes. are more uh, jaise inspired from jaise kaddu ki shape hoti hai i think that's what it is called like what is bengal uh, chala if you see right. bengal chala that is a type of dome so if they have that concept they can build it also in uh, this uh, there's a beautiful bengal dome in south india also the pallava period mahavali puram those uh, panchar rathas jo the the pancharathas that are there in mahabalipuram the draupadi ratha it's a beautiful bengal chala you go and see it you see pictures if you can't go you go and see barabara cave is 300 this is bc if you notice the barabara cave the great entry is a bengal chala that is a dome where are this getting this uh, ideas from it is there it is everything if i was uh, when i was writing this book on hindu temple architecture i had read stella camerish's book 
thoroughly. It's a very difficult book to read, but I have co covered the volume one and volume two many times. She has specifically mentioned everything is there in Indian architecture. Just because they did not use it doesn't mean it's not there. Every All concepts are there. From the true art to the dome, everything is there in Indian architecture, on the Indian architectural sign, the ancient one. They did not use it. Like the true arch is not favored for temple architecture. They said they earlier to say the true arch also Islam brought it. No, true arch was here. Right. They have later discovered a true arch is very much there. Stella Cameron writes that true arch is there in India, but somehow for some reason they did not, because in temple architecture they favored this piling up of the temple is a piling up towards the heavens. So it's it, a pile up. It's a stepwise. Uh, so like it's a stepwise. So yes. Yeah, so that is why they did not favor the true arch. They favored the traviate arch, which is so one brick yeah. after the other. It goes up this way. So that is why the uh, Hindus, uh, the Hindu temple architecture does not have a true arch. There's a reason for it. It is not that they did not know. They knew. It's just that they did not use it. So this uh, Islamic because architecture. Because we have the better concept, technology, and I mean, even even if you look at uh, like they had a choice. Up they up are up so up advanced. They oh, had yeah. a choice. You, you you will see the uh, even the kind of kalash. Uh, I mean, usse kalash laga hoga jo, uh, I mean, which is very At much a Hindu, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that is the clear distinction there itself. Kalash, elephant. Uh, Those typical lotus signs you will find. Yeah, These so, are all Indian it's, it's Hindu all architecture. It's all kitti mukha. If you go, uh, if you go to this Kutub Minar, you'll find it's full of Kitti Mukhas, full of those Bhar Bhakas, those on, on the pillar tops, they have this Bhar Bhakas. Uh, it's just it nothing to do with, they are not load bearing. It's just symbolic of load bearing. It is not actually bearing any load, just a symbol of that. But this, uh, they used to carve in this way because in India, in our temple architecture, it's, uh, nothing is uh, left empty. They had these beautiful sculptures and carvings all over. So you find bar markers on top. So in Kutub Minar, it's, uh, if you go and see the pillars in yes. Kutub Minar, everything is there. Those bells are hanging, those beautiful floral motifs, those are all part of the ten temples. I think a lot of coverage has been done on that. Jo Kutub Minar wala part. Ji, uh, Kutub Minar, yeah. they have gods now because they still have those yes. days. The Ganesha is there. So many other gods are there. So it's very easy to catch them there. <laughs> Indo-Islamic oh, architecture. Oh. You know, one of the uh, Delhi historians I had written on Facebook once about this. She came and she argued with me that uh, this were built by Hindu artisans. So uh, she's also very well known, Delhi Circle. I'm not taking anybody's name. She's also very well known, uh, JNU ka PhD. Hai. So she's telling me, she told me that uh, these were built by Hindu artisans. So they had the designs. So I, I told her what I had to tell her, but this is how they have fooled us, you know, all these years. This is how they have fooled us, Hindu Islamic, because the Hindu uh, artisans created. See, the Muslim rulers were so liberal, they allowed Hindu artisans to create these things inside a mosque. Now, what do you say to this? That Kutub Minar, that uh, the iron pillar, uh, that is also brought from somewhere else, right? From another that temple. from somewhere else. else. It was, uh, it is uh, <coughs> Gupta period, early Gupta period pillar. And it was uh, later added. Uh, Firoz Shah Tuklak used to do a lot of moving around of all. He is a by god, huh? Firoz Shah Tuklak. Uh, and uh, he destroyed many temples. Some temple he destroyed and from there he brought this. So... Uh, he used to do a lot of this even in his own Firoz Shah Kotla, that ground. There's a, uh, this Firoz, uh, this, he has his own structure built over there. There is also another Shoka Stamba there. That has also been uh, brought by him from somewhere. He used to carry, get those ferried by through the boats on the rivers and bring them. Uh, the Kutub Minar pillar, I think I'll tell you from where. I'll just give me, just, I'll just Google it and tell you from where it is brought. I think Kutub Minar itself had uh, some. Um, Kutub Minar had uh, 27 Hindu and Jain temples. Yes, 20, 26 Hindu Jain temples. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, then this 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 tower itself, uh, I mean, it's said to be. Uh, I mean, it's first the, of all. Uh, just a minute. Uh, this what? iron pillar of Delhi was bought from the Udayagiri caves, huh, from the Madhya Pradesh. Madhya right. Pradesh Udayagiri caves, uh, it, is, uh, it was brought and. Uh, Actually, there is uh, no fixed uh, thing on who brought it. They say Anandpal Tomar might have brought it. 
so and, uh, maybe because of the temples were there he had brought it but uh, i'm not sure if he brought it because firoz shah tokluk was in the habit of moving these pillars a lot he lot had moved a lot of pillars so somebody had brought it but this is from udayagiri madhya pradesh okay so on qutub minar i think ek ek main uh, usme pad raha tha study ka uh, and uh, i don't recall who claimed it but from qutub minar it's very clearly a, a scientific building it's a very complex building to be honest i mean at at that time uh, what what they are claiming i mean definitely it's uh, much beyond that uh, that i mean it was much beyond the timeline of qutubuddin aibak itself uh, it is uh, definitely a scientific building for uh, which was used for uh, astronomical purposes uh, see that was possible because i'll tell you the hindu temples that are built these are all the person the stapati who is to build it had to have a knowledge of astrology astronomy so these sciences were compulsory for them because our temples are not just temples where you go and worship huh? these are uh, they have a lot of philosophical meanings behind it which is all connected to cosmos universe and astronomy astrology if you read the books on uh, hindu temple i'm talking of the, the old books if you read stella cambridge books on this don't read the new ones because most of them don't understand the scriptures are very difficult to understand if you read those old books you will find that uh, astronomy astrology these are very important very integral part of uh, indian temples so it is always a possibility that they had an astronomical tower over there for studies it is always possible so um, uh, if i don't know how they will prove it because esi is not cooperative at all they will not cooperate at least the current group of people working there these are all uh, old people matlab they have all come from the leftist era and i know people uh, with right wing ideologies face a lot of trouble in asi i know people they cannot speak out uh, they cannot write anything they are so scared that they lose their jobs they cannot write on social media so asi uh, just today today i heard of a temple which was central uh, in kerala central government had said that this is going to be a heritage monument and 2009 may they and they have said the asi is taking over somebody had gone there and found that there is no more a temple it's already in ruins it's broken totally what is asi doing then what is the use of this body then yeah, fixing up uh, taj mahal for work boat yes they are just fixing up the islamic monuments yeah what they have done major works for the tombs and mosques across india what have they done for the hindu temple I mean, how is it possible that the whole area doesn't have a temple uh, dating before maybe Birla Mandir, the whole Delhi area? Because, um, the, this was one. the power center of the Islamists, and they were very brutal. Huh? They don't go by this books that say that they were liberal. Akbar was liberal. He was nobody was liberal. They were all very brutal. And the if you read those books, I I, read, I recently I wrote on the slavery. Islamic uh, Hindu slavery under Islamic uh, rule, and uh, it is terrible to read those. How they if, uh, say a uh, Hindu cannot pay a tax, they would just pick up the Hindu and uh, sell him as a slave. First convert him, then sell him as a slave. This is how Hindus have been tortured. They were so scared they could not build uh, temples. I was I have written also for on, uh, Guru Nanak because of this Khalistani first post I have written for them. It's not yet published, but uh, why Guru Nanak? Uh, this uh, they say that this monotheism in Khalistani is uh, because of Islam. It is not what he had done is he had taken the Advaita philosophy of the from the Vedas Upanishad. He had taken why did he take that? Because this area was so flattered, people were so broken down at that time. There were no temples. What will they look on to? So he chose that Advaita philosophy, which says that God is there, omnipresent. He cannot be seen. This is how it happened in Delhi. Why you see no temples? This is how they have done it. They had flattened temples. They had broken the morals, taken up people as slaves, destroyed the Hindu backbone totally. What about this Jama Masjid? This is also built on some temple, right? Uh, I have heard that Jamuna see, Devi Temple was that. Uh, but the problem is, you know what? We can make this. We can talk about this, but there are no archaeological backing for it, na? So they will say there is no archaeological backing. You, if you put up, uh, if you speak, uh, they say they will say that uh, you are a bhakt. There is no archaeological backing. We need for make this uh, to 
argue with them, we need archaeological backing for it. There is no archaeological backing. There are pictures, you know, there are pictures of um, not this Jama Masjid, I think it's in uh, UP one, some, I think, uh, Agra Jama Masjid. There are actually miniature paintings made by the Muslim artists of them putting, breaking temples and taking the deities and putting them under the staircases. Just, I'm quite pretty sure Delhi Jama Masjid also has that. They have put the deities under the staircases so that when the Muslims go up the stairs, they are stepping on the that gods. Was, that, I think that was for the Mathura. Some, some that was for the Mathura Jama Masjid, yes. yes. So I'm saying that this is, this is the concept. I will not be surprised if they take up the Jama Masjid staircase and find uh, murtis below it. Because that I is mean, the basic concept. You, you see that clearly in... Uh, uh, the, the way, I mean, Advocate Vishnu Shankar Jain had to struggle just to find that shivling. That shivling and, the, and the uh, audacity not to open, to yeah. make a, a spout on top and clean. This is a fountain. And, and I think he's also uh, fighting for uh, on this Kutub Minar complex. Jo yes, 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 yes. The temples. So that's a very noble act. But kab tak ye, I mean, something has to be done to to change all this. I mean, unless we fix the people who are at, at least on in, in power in, in those uh, departments. The problem is that no, the people who are in power, judiciary, the, uh, executive body, these are all anti-Hindus. Honestly, they are anti-Hindus. Where will we get help from? We are fighting. We are, I'm writing um, uh, articles. I'm writing uh, writing on Twitter, or Facebook, but this is the this is what we can do. This is our limit. We I need help from can, the. Yeah. We need we need, we also need a collective effort. Pushpendra Kulshesh ji, ki sabha mein bhi main jata hoon, aur I think unhone bhi apni team ke saath ek jisme Vishnu Jain ji bhi hain, aur main bhi unke saath kahin na kahin directly juda hoon. So I mean, what he's doing is basically collecting all the information. From across India, जो भी इस तरह के मजार या जो जो illegal हैं, उनके evidence के साथ अगर support किया जाए तो we can we can together take it up uh, with the authorities legally as well. कि राज्य सरकारें पूरे देश में अपने अपने state में जहां भी सरकारी जमीन पर इल्लीगल स्ट्रक्चर बने हैं उन्हें तत्काल प्रभाव से डिमोलिश करें और इसकी रिपोर्ट हाई कोर्ट में जमा करें यह ऑर्डर सनातनियों को नहीं पता यह भी कोई जिहादी आपको बताने आएगा आपको अपने फायदे की भी चीज पता नहीं है शत्रु का भी पता नहीं है भाई तो कैसे समझाएं घर घर जाके समझाने की हमारे पास ताकत नहीं है इसके लिए मैंने अभी हल्द्वानी के अंदर एक मुहिम शुरू की और आपके यहां आने से पहले कर्नाटक में बीदर में रात के एक बजे सभा में मैंने कहा और आपसे विनती करता हूं आप अगर कहें तो हाथ जोड़ दो मैं हाथ भी जोड़ने के लिए तैयार हूं कि पुष्पेंद्र कुलश्रेष्ठ क्योंकि वही एक चीज वेरीफाइड है और वेरीफाइड नहीं है आप अपने शहर में जाएं पिकनिक पे जाएं आपको इतनी सेल्फी लेने की आदत है अच्छी बात है जहां भी जाएं मजार आपको मस्जिद आपको सड़क पे कहीं नजर आए कार बराबर में रोकिएगा उसके साथ बैठ करके एक सेल्फी लीजिएगा आपकी तस्वीर हो उस मजार की उस मस्जिद की जो सार्वजनिक स्थलों पे बनी हुई हो उसकी सेल्फी लेकर के मेरे फेसबुक अकाउंट पर पुष्पेंद कुलसेस वेरीफाइड पर पोस्ट इसलिए कर दीजिए कि उसी का प्रिंट आउट निकाल करके हमको कोर्ट में जमा करना है इतना आप करेंगे तो ये कम से कम मैं ये मानता हूं बहुत बातें मैंने कही बहुत आपने सुनी पहले भी सुन चुके बहुत लंबी लड़ाई है जो लड़ाई हमारे सामने है जिसमें हम जीत गए हैं उसको लागू करने के लिए कल हमारी 16 जनवरी को प्रयागराज कोर्ट में डेट है हम सड़क पे चलते चलते ये भी कर रहे हैं इतनी तो कम से कम आप भूमिका निभा सकते हैं सो आई थिंक दोस काइंड ऑफ collated effort is very much required uh, agar hum kuch karna chahte hain i mean we have seen the government 
has their hands full. They have lots of problems. They need to prioritize those uh, in different ways. But this is a mo movement that needs to be driven by we people. We have to do it. We have, like yesterday yes. only I wrote on uh, Twitter, everywhere I wrote Instagram, that we now cannot, uh, we don't have to say that the, why the government is not doing it. We have to start from our end. Yeah. Go renovate the old temples in the localities. Go build new temples. Buy a plot. Get together, all of you. Each of you will have to pay some thousand rupees maybe and collect it. Yeah. Build a new temple. We have to take our own initiative now. Yes, I mean, government will only hear those who are shouting right so uh, i mean that's the that government also need. cannot do our, uh, every, we need to create a base right? person yes yes because these people let us be honest will come out on the street we have seen anti ca riots we have seen that happens but somewhere we have to call their bluff as well i mean isn't it we have to we have to keep on uh, our weapon is social media so we have to use that yes so I think uh, that's good interaction. But if they, if we have missed any part, agar aap us pe explain karna jayenge, uh, I mean, I just wanted to have an initial session where we can interact with you. And maybe if you can join us sometime on our spaces, I think we'll get a perhaps a good panelist. Let and me know if the topic to is on heritage and history. I'll come. I am yes, not into yes. defense and all. We, we yes, will yes, have a dedicated space for you. I mean, dedicated, we will we'll have dedicated space. The way we have discussed here. Because mm -hmm. uh, so many people are joining us. They have lots of knowledge. They want to know so many they, so many questions they have. They want to answer them. And also, you know, the concern sharing. Uh, the space is somewhere you can share your concerns. You have uh, like-minded people come together and they discuss the issue and so many things come out when we interact with many people. So, so it's, that sure, would be a new experience for you if you have not yet. Uh, no, I have. So I don't do I have not you. done it. So if you all do it, I'll we come and join. Let me know. So, so we, we do. We have do, a do, dedicated do. space. Yeah, we will sure, we'll sure. have a dedicated space on this uh, particular topic with the. I would like panel. to you know one uh, focus on one thing. Uh, if you ever do a yes. space that is this uh, the myth of uh, Islamic architecture, this is something which needs to be told to the people that there is nothing called Islamic this architecture. Topic and we will keep the topic this only. This is very attractive mm -hmm. topic. People would love to talk about it because everybody says that if they were architect, why the the Middle East and this all absolutely why <laughs> you see the Middle East architecture. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now modern is different, but uh, what, what, what was there in past? I mean, what is their history? Yeah. So absolutely, yes, we have so many, temples so, and... <laughs> <laughs> so that will be interesting se session. I yeah. I believe people will come with so many so many things. And and and, and I mean, what we try is basically we try to get a panel and uh, the people also who can add value to it it's we try to conduct conduct it like an open brainstorming session rather than a point scoring one so it's a debate nice. name, but it's, yes yes so it's very focused discussion on the topic it's we do not go um, i mean divert much or digress much everyone has the questions so they will also you you will also get a lot of questions perhaps so i think it will be good uh, interaction uh, that we'll keep so, uh, thank you, Moni Dipadi. Uh, I think you have uh, really given us a lot of information. We'll uh, perhaps follow up on that on our spaces also. Or, uh, I will appeal to our viewers that we will have a lot of spaces. This is a very good thing that we will have a lot of we conduct it like a brainstorming session, an open brainstorming rather than point scoring. And uh, so do join us on Team News Our Spaces. Uh, do follow us uh, on our Twitter IDs. Unamji, uh, Moni Dipaji. And also subscribe our channel, uh, Team News Our, on YouTube. Amara, episode like kariye comment kariye agar aapko pasand aaya if there is any feedback so thank you so much uh, mani dipadi uh, thank you so much punam ji namaskar jai hind thank you very much thank you very much namaste jai hind